talk about foreign exchange in Nigeria uh, in a move to alleviate pressure on foreign reserves and improve dollar liquidity. Earlier this month, Central Bank of Nigeria collapsed all segments of the FX markets into the investors and exporters window. As a result of this action, official rate has risen uh, from 463 to 768, uh, which is the current rate. That was it. Yeah, 768.17. Friday was 770. So yesterday, the Naira appreciated at the investors and exporters window, uh, Nigeria's official foreign exchange market, gaining 0.25% following increase in dollar supply. We see the daily turnover there, 198 million yesterday. Friday was 125. Uh, so yes, let's talk about that. Our guest uh, is pr uh, professor of uh, finance and capital markets uh, at Nassau State University, Professor Uche Uwaleke. He's in our Abuja studios. Good morning, Professor. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So what do you make of the FX liberalization by the, uh, by the government? Yeah, thank you, Rotus, uh, for inviting me. Uh, let me start by saying it's a welcome development. Um, um, the multiple exchange rate system is one system that um, has outlived its usefulness. Uh, and I would like to say upfront that at the time it was introduced um, in 2016, um, that was, um, um, in, you know, more or less necessitated by prevailing circumstances. And last talking about the fact that um, you, you know reserves fell um, on the back of um, you know dropping oil price you know and so on, um, and um, it's also important I mention that um, there are also countries that you know operate multiple exchange rates. Um, and IMF paper I, I was looking at was talking about 24 countries at some point you know operating multiple exchange rates. Um, so what that means is that. Um, Multiple exchange rate is also meant to serve, uh, you know, its own purpose. Um, you know, they, they of, often talk about addressing, you know, balance of payments and issues. But it is it's not meant to, you know, be uh, something for a long term. It's actually meant to be a stopgap measure. Uh, that's why I said that for us in Nigeria, since 2016, it has out, 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 outlived its, um, you know, use, usefulness. We've seen uh, lots of. Um, uh, you know, market and discipline associated with um, multiple exchange rates. So I think it is time we, you know, we uh, made away with the multiple exchange rate. So the idea of collapsing these rates um, to the INE window is, is, is a welcome one. And we've also seen the way uh, the markets um, have reacted, both the local boss and also the international, um, you know, markets. Um, now, having said that, it's also important I mention that when you talk about exchange rates, um, countries actually have two choices. It's either you, you are fixing it, you're pegging it to the dollar, as um, you know, some countries do, um, uh, such as Saudi Arabia, for example, Qatar, uh, Kuwait, even Algeria. Um, of course, a precondition for operating fixed exchange rate or pegging your, uh, the currency to the dollar you know, has to do with uh, uh, sufficient reserves. So a country must have sufficient reserves to be able to, um, you know, sustain that. Uh, you can also have flexible exchange rate where you float your um, uh, currency, uh, allowing market forces to determine the, you know, exchange rate. Uh, where you know something you find in the U.S., in the U.K., in the European Union, the 19 countries there in Australia, you know, and also and so on. A precondition for that to happen too has to do with having a diversified export base. It's important I'm mentioning these preconditions. Now we can also have the you know variants of the two. You can have a, a crawling peg where you have a band around which these uh, exchange rates fluctuate, as in the case of China, in the case of uh, Singapore, or you have a managed float system, which uh, Nigeria and some other countries uh, we are trying to now do. Okay. Um, you see, having said that, again, what is important is um, how do you now go about the transitioning? Yes. I have said that uh, collapsing this exchange rate is fine. Moving, transitioning from a, a, a fixed to a flexible exchange rate is okay. But again, how do we do that? In my view, I think it's something that should um, you know, uh, proceed with um, caution. It's not something that um, should be done drastically um, because of, its, of the preconditions I mentioned. Before you can you know, say you want to even manage the float system, you should have sufficient reserves. You should have a diversified um, um, ex export base. Uh, as we speak, uh, Rotus, I'm sure you know that um, reserves, our external reserves, just in the last one month, I was looking at the movement in foreign reserves, you know, has dropped by about $1 billion. Between 23rd 
of um, last month and um, 23rd of um, this month. Very soft, one billion. So, so, so liquid reserves now fell from 34, 34 from five yep. billion dollars yep. to 33.6 billion dollars. So, so, so how, as far as where we go moving forward, right? I want to ask you about inflationary shocks. We've seen electricity tariffs being forecast to raise at the beginning of July. Customs have updated their website to reflect the fact that uh, clearing of goods will be at 589, um, which is not even in line with where the INE window is, but they're moving from 442 to 589. Um, and, you know, in fact, our, our next guest is going to be talking about flour millers and how they are raising prices based on where the exchange rate is right now. But there's some questions around that. Are these normal actions following exchange rate repricing, uh, Professor? Oh, yes, they should be expected. Um, um, again, let us also take a lesson from some other countries. Uh, in 2016, November to be precise, Egypt uh, also chose to uh, float its um, uh, currency, the Egyptian pounds, and that was uh, on the advice of the IMF. Of course, at the time, understandably, Egypt was um, you know, looking for an IMF facility, I think $12 billion um, you know, program. So to be able to get the first tranche, they had that condition. And then Egypt um, uh, you know, floated uh, its uh, currency. Um, at that time, the Egyptian exchange rate to the dollar was um, eight Egyptian pounds you know, to the dollar. But as soon as that happened, the exchange rate went from eight, dollar, eight Egyptian pounds to the dollar to 17 Egyptian pounds to the dollar, which was the rate at the parallel market at the time. So we, there was a convergence as a result of that move, which we have also seen in, in our own case in Nigeria, a convergence now between the official and the exchange um, you know, rate. But it, you know, it didn't end there, okay? It also resulted in inflationary uh, you know, uh, pressure, serious inflationary pressure. Uh, inflation moving, for, for example, from 13% in October to 19% um, in November, just within a one month um, period. And to even exacerbate that, which we are also going to find in our own case in Nigeria, in, interest rates also went up. Now, why did interest rates go up in Egypt? Because, again, to support that float that has been done, the Central Bank of Egypt needed to raise the basic rate, the policy rate. So it was raised by 3%, by 300 basis points. So all of that you know, combined to exacerbate inflation in Egypt. In our own case now, I see a situation in which the Central Bank too can only support this float by increasing um, our MPR further from the current 18.5%. Because if you don't increase rates, okay, you are not going to have the expected, the anticipated uh, inflows, you know, capital flows that, um, uh, you know, we are, we are all expecting. Perfect, Professor. Remember, yeah, let, let the me expectation jump in. is that with, the conver with this. Let, let, let me jump in right there. Yes. Just, okay, today is World MSME Day, right? Micro, small, medium enterprises. Vice President um, uh, Kashim uh, Shetima uh, put out a statement saying that the, 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 the administration wants to target single digit rates for MSMEs. So on that point you just raised just now, on the fact that you have to keep NPR going up in order to attract investment coming in, can you do that while also trying to get lower interest? Even the president in his inauguration speech said he wants lower interest rates in the country. So is that impossible if you're also trying to, if you have to raise rates to attract FX into the country? Yeah, you see, that's why I talked about um, you know, a gradual move to this um, unification rather than the drastic way we have done, you know, gone about it. Central banks uh, all over the world face what we call policy trilemma. Uh, Rotus, you're an economics, I'm sure you, 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 you know about um, the Munde Fleming um, um, you know, a theory that's right. that talks about um, the, um, yes, the, the Exchange rate imp management. Imp impossible trinity, yeah. as it were. Okay? Yeah. Oh, yes, which says that you, ca you can't have. Three of you them. can't have free flow of capital, yeah. you can't have um, managed exchange rates, you can't have independent monetary policy all at the same time. So in terms of the three prizes that we have, exchange rate, interest rate, and um, inflation rate, you can't have a low inflation rate, a low interest rate environment. At the same time, you want to show up your reserves and have low exchange rates. At the same time, it's impossible for central banks. Okay, So the, the issue now is that um, as I said, it's, it's going to be inevitable. It's either you increase your rates, because we hear now that foreign investors are saying even the Treasury bill rates at 6-5%, you know, that is, is low. 
that you know we need to move up in the treasury bills for them to you know to come in uh, you know based on what we are reading so if interest rates don't go up this expectation that foreign investments will come in uh, investors will come in because you are floating currency may not materialize you see that is the uh, that is the dilemma and of course you know inflation rate today at 22.41% is quite high so returns in the country today are in the negative territory so you have real negative rates of return and for investors to be you know attracted for them to come in you must have uh, you have to raise your rates okay so that is the problem um, you know so this whole thing these reforms that are all coming at the same time first subsidy removal exchange rate uh, unification we're talking about electricity tariff even though abuja electricity tariff you know electricity you know they have denied it okay although it is bound to happen all of this you know will crystallize in higher inflation rate and even rotus back to the case of egypt egypt has not recovered from it up to today if you check the exchange rate of egyptian pound to the uh, dollar it is one egyptian pound to 30 30 egyptian pound to, to one dollar and what is the imf even telling them now that they have not done enough of it they have been managing it that they should now you know proceed to what they call a durable flexible exchange rate in other words they should make it permanent okay because again they are asking for another uh, you know, for, you know line, line of credit from the imf okay so the only way we can sustain stability in our forex market is to diversify our export base okay is to grow our industrial uh, you know develop our industrial base i have had people talk about also going to the imf to take facility we should not be thinking about going to the imf to take any 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 facility you know uh, we still have 34 billion dollars enough to finance five six months of um, um, you know imports but the way it is being depleted okay just because of what we have done we really have to work on the supply side which is why i'm happy that some subnationals are already taking uh, you know taking advantage of what is happening mm. um the other day i was talking to some subnationals you know about the take leveraging the opportunities uh, you know created by this unification uh, you know by setting up diaspora commission you know and i read yesterday i was happy to read that the Enugu state government for example is organizing a diaspora and, and investment summit okay so states government should also wake up to attract this uh, capital um, uh, in flows into their states. Great so stuff. far, when you read capital importation reports, it's only Lagos, Ogun, and a few of them. Right. So, so we need if more. states, you know, also join hands with the federal government to attract, you know, more uh, capital into the country, I'm sure uh, probably the supply side, the liquidity, you know, issue um, will improve. Uh, you know, will be addressed. Professor Wallace, especially in the medium to long, long term. Great, great not, stuff. Not in the short term, certainly. Fat look. Fascinating times ahead. We're glad to have you join us to talk about this. And uh, we'll have you again because there's so much more to discuss, especially the IMF. That's a debate. We're going to have to debate with Professor Wallake in the future. Professor Wallake is the uh, finance, uh, capital markets, finance professor of capital markets at Nassau State University. State is doing great things. Thank you, Professor.